Welcome back, Axe friends. We have a really exotic piece this morning, right? Plenty of exotic stuff to try around here. This is a beautiful vintage Warder and Pandel Rhineland pattern. I got in a trade with a good German Axe friend who sent me this great short history of this brand. Warder and Pandel, Wuppertal Kulinhan. Hope I pronounced that right. Founded 1884 by Jacob and Carl Warder. 1908, it was combined with the company of Isaac Pondell, founded 1870, and from then on, named Warder and Pondell, closed in the late 50s. Wuppertal is apparently the mecca of German axe making. Located in the North Rhine-Westphalia province of Germany, cradled between the Rhine and Ruhr rivers, it's a pretty mountainous area. So the abundance rivers, streams, and ore mines provided the raw materials for metal forging from the 16th century on. After the Industrial Revolution, this entire region became a kind of industrial powerhouse, which is precisely why in the wars it got fought over and bombed a lot. No doubt the location has a lot to do with the name Rhineland pattern, which can come in a lot of variations. Where have we seen it before? Oxenkopf, of course, also a company founded in Wuppertal. Literally hundreds of small tool makers started out there, including Helco Work, which is still located there today. So my friend told me that this uh, Grundspect, okay, this marking here in the middle, means woodpecker, all right? It's the model, like this is the woodpecker axe. Probably, probably because it's so long, it's a really long Rhineland pattern, all right? A um, little unusual, but it's really cool. Very narrow edge sweep there. Takes a pretty nice freaking edge, I'll tell you what. That's nice. Um, it also has one of these European eyes. So maybe in this video, we will do some cross wedging and talk a little bit about European eyes, um, which I think are kind of, I mean, at least to me, they're a little bit harder to hang. Uh, maybe just because I'm used to standard round oval eyes. Um, you know, they, these are a little bit, a little bit challenging. Maybe because you tend to run into things you don't see a lot, maybe in American and standard eyes, like, so this one, um, clearly in the forging, see this, there's a, there's a flat spot here, quite flat, you know, on the entry into the eye. And then it kind of opens up into a cavity. See that? And I don't think that's bad forging. That's probably, um, designed in there. So that's why maybe a cross wedge would be a good solution to this because you have, you know, some, some gap in the length here. Uh, that you want to push back against. And, and cross wedges can be beautiful functional solutions for that. So the first thing in getting a cross wedge set up is cutting two perpendicular curves. I cut the curves as kind of as wide as I can as well because you don't want your wedges to lock up. A lot of wood's gonna go in really quick into the eye and, and one of the things that can go wrong is that the wedges just lock up way too soon. And you don't get enough penetration. The curves are cut at different lengths as well. So the main kerf, all right, the normal one is this is this is about two thirds down the eye, which is the rule. And then the side ones are about two thirds that distance. Okay, see, so the side ones are gonna be shorter. And I've drilled little holes here. I know there's a woodworking or carpentry name for that, but it, uh, it's kind of a, just a helps a little bit in case you do bottom out, um, that you don't send a split right down the wood. Um, helps a little bit in that regard. Since exotic is the name of the game today, we're using some exotic material in the in the wedge. This is um, ancient bog wood. That's what this is. This is a really interesting kind of wood. It's very hard, it's very dense, and they're really black, so it just looks great, okay? So this is gonna be the main wedge. The, these are gonna be the side wedges, and I, you know, I've got some things measured out here, like you know where halfway down is, where this would top out, would be totally bottom. Uh, I've rounded out the front, all right? I've left the, the back pretty flat because it's flat at the back, all right? I'm leaving it flat. And then we will we'll measure and cut uh, the side wedges out of this. And I've measured them in the same way relative to their curves. 